The Native Youth Olympics is sponsored in part by Tell Alaska, continuing a tradition of innovation and excellence, connecting businesses across Alaska through an advanced statewide data network, from office to office, town to town, to the world outside. At Tell Alaska, of course you can. Heartbeat Alaska joins all participants of the 2004 Native Youth Olympics in thanking Cook Inlet Tribal Council for making the games possible. One, two, three, four, let's go. It's Heartbeat. It's a fabulous show. Alaska. Hi, Heartbeat Alaska. It's Heartbeat. <laughs> Alaska. Pull up a chair and enjoy the show. You hear it from Sitka to Barrow. Gather around for genius show. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. Welcome one, welcome all. We are here at the University of Alaska Anchorage for the annual Native Youth Olympics. The crowd is huge, and the contestants come from all over the state. They train hard. They take this very seriously. This is almost like the Olympics, isn't it? What's your name? And you're from Togiak? And what's your name? These guys are here to compete, just like many, many others. They filed in like groups of athletes, ready for a competition. And that's just what they were. They came from all corners of the state, proudly wearing their school colors. More than 60 communities were represented at this year's Native Youth Olympics. They practiced all year for this moment in the spotlight. Week after week, day after day, these athletes have been busy stretching, pulling, hopping, jumping, kicking, balancing, and dancing. Getting ready for the 2004 NYO. It's shaping up to be a really good year. It's, uh, we've had 50 more athletes this year than last year, uh, 400 and something students. And it's really nice to see, the, see it grow over the years, um, see all the competitors come here and to compete and meet, meet friends. And that's what we're about. It's a great opportunity for the youth to come together, practice a unique set of skills, interact with each other. Um, the sportsmanship displayed at this event is just phenomenal. I think that's one of the most impressive things. It really sets these youth up as role models for their peers. After a brief opening ceremony, the games began. The first event was the kneel jump. To do this event, one must kneel down on both knees and sit 
on their heels. The tops of their feet must be flat on the floor. The object is to jump up and land on your feet while achieving the greatest distance. You must keep balance on both feet when you land. Judges measure how far an athlete has jumped from the starting line to the back of their heels. We just had our first event and um, the boy bro broke the record, so we're off to a really good start. Uh, I think he jumped 65 and 7 A's. I think, the, I think that's the, what I measured out. Adolf from the Lower Pascaquim School District set a new record in the kneel jump. Um, he exceeded the old record by about four inches. I just did the kneel jump and I'm about to do Alaskan hike kick. And then in the next couple of days I'll be doing uh, six other games. I'm doing the one hand reach, the one foot high kick, the two foot high kick, Alaskan high kick, the kneel jump, the scissor rod jump, and there's two more, wrist carry and heel hop. It sounds like Elizabeth is going to take it easy this year. Following the kneel jump was the Alaskan high kick. The object here is to kick the seal skin ball, which hangs at 42 inches for the boys, and 36 inches for the girls. But it's not as easy as it looks. First, you must sit on the floor and face the ball. While holding the foot you are not going to kick with, you must balance yourself on one hand, jump into the air, and kick the ball. Every round, the ball is raised four inches until three participants remain. Each round after that, the ball is raised in one inch increments. I'm from St. Michael, Alaska. I've, I've, I've been coaching there for maybe 10, 12 years. And this is my third trip with assisting chaperoning here in Anchorage with students. The students are, were already entrained with basketball season, volleyball season, and when it came, since NYO is the last um, sport, they're already well trained, but then at my home I trained them for an um, hour and a half daily, running, a lot of running and workout. The stick pull is an event that requires two participants sitting on the floor with the soles of their feet touching each other. Both participants must have their feet parallel and together with their knees bent at a 45 degree angle. Each contestant grips a stick that is between them. One grips the inside of the stick while the other grips the outer ends of the stick. The object is to steadily pull your opponent towards you without jerking. Spotters place their feet on the side of the contestant's feet and torso to keep the contestants from pulling each other sideways.
For generations, the Chupik Eskimos of Nunavak Island have maintained the finest herd of reindeer anywhere in the world. The flavor and nutrition of these magnificent free-range deer is unmatched and is now available in commercial USDA-inspected lots. This is the only official outlet for authentic Nunavak reindeer meat. For more information or to place an order, contact Nunavak Reindeer and Seafood Products, Box 42, McCorriac, Alaska, 99630, or call 907-827-8015. Supplies are limited. Jeannie Green Productions, Alaska's premier commercial, documentary, and event production team. Whenever and wherever you need video production, our experienced, dedicated professionals give your project the extra edge you're looking for. Alaska Native owned and operated. Jeannie Green Productions, your complete video production service. The Wrist Carry is an event of strength and endurance. This event has origins based on a hunter being able to carry his game back to the village, often great distances. The participant sits on the floor and hooks his or her wrist around the middle of a stick that is 48 inches long, gripping their forearm with their other hand. Two stick carriers lift the participant off of the floor and carry him or her around the room until the contestants let go of the stick. The wrist carry is a team effort. The one foot high kick is an event that requires flexibility and good balance. A contestant must jump off both feet simultaneously, kick the ball with one foot, and land on the same foot while maintaining his or her balance. Hopping on one foot is allowed to maintain balance on the landing. The starting height for the girls is 46 inches and 56 inches for the boys. After each round, the ball is raised in four inch increments until three competitors remain. Then the ball is raised in one inch increments. Last year, Barrow Youth John Miller set a new record for the one foot high kick at the Native Youth Olympics while tying the international record from the World Indian Olympics. This year, John returned to the Olympics to see if a new record could be set. Throughout the day, the athletes went back and forth, reaching new heights and raising the bar for the next participant. No one can say that these athletes didn't try their hardest. But eventually, the top three competitors would be left standing. I mean, jumping. Amongst the top three, John Miller. This 16-year-old record setter had things on his mind. After last year's nine foot six inch jump, nine foot seven was on his list of things to do. Oh. 
Although John would be the last man standing, he couldn't break nine foot five inches this year. Not to worry though, John's currently a sophomore in high school, which means that he'll be competing in the NYO for a couple more years. The event that everyone loves, the seal hop, was next on the agenda. The boy seal hop and the girl seal hop are similar, except for the hands. There are six athletes per heat and one judge for each athlete. For the boy seal hop, each participant gets in a push-up style position with his legs straight and elbows bent. His fingers are curled under so that he is supported by the heels of his hands and his first knuckles. The participant must remain in this position and hop along the floor in his hands and toes only. The winner is the athlete who travels the farthest distance. This is an event of sheer endurance. The girls' seal hop is identical to the boys, except that the girls can keep their arms straight and do not have to curl their fingers under. Instead, they hop in their toes and palms. It takes strength and pure determination to seal hop, no matter who you are. Another event that is held at the Native Youth Olympics is the scissor broad jump. This skill is invaluable to the Inupiat people of the North Slope, where jumping from ice flow to ice flow is an important skill to know. This footage from last year's Native Youth Olympics demonstrates the art of the scissor broad jump. Great distances can be achieved with this jump. Another event we see every year is the foot pull. In this event, two contestants sit on the floor facing each other. Their hands are placed slightly behind them or to their sides and act as leverage for pulling against each other. A leather strap is placed around the top of each competitor's foot at the signal. The two competitors pull against each other. If one competitor pulls the strap off the other's foot or pulls the other competitor's foot across the center line, they win. The best out of three determines the winner. Another event which is popular at the Native Youth Olympics is the two-foot high kick. For this event, the participant must leave the ground with both feet simultaneously, kick the ball, and land on both feet while maintaining his or her balance. For girls, the starting height is 42 inches and 50 inches for boys. The ball is raised in four inch increments until three competitors remain. Then the ball is raised in one inch increments. Although the Native Youth Olympics may look like a lot of fun, it takes the dedication of coaches, parents, NYO staff, and the participants especially to make an incredible event possible.
The Native Youth Olympics is sponsored in part by Tel Alaska, continuing a tradition of innovation and excellence, connecting businesses across Alaska through an advanced statewide data network, from office to office, town to town, to the world outside. At Tel Alaska, of course you can. Heartbeat Alaska joins all participants of the 2004 Native Youth Olympics in thanking Cook Inlet Tribal Council for making the games possible.